head-to-head -head draft leaks, all down to unfortunate matchups, or do we make our own luck? In this episode, we'll have a look what the data says. Welcome back to the Draft FC podcast, the podcast website and YouTube channel dedicated to all things official Draft FPL. My name is Mitch and I'm your host for a second bonus episode in this, the March international break. Now, if you haven't checked out our earlier episode this week, um, you'll be able to find that um, by just clicking on the channel or looking at the episode before in your podcast platform. That episode was a QA. and a I'd asked for some questions from the community uh, about a week ago now, and so I used those to frame the content for that episode. So if you haven't checked that out already, please do so after you've uh, listened to this one, of course. Um, but one of the questions that we got from that um, was something that I touched on at the end and decided that it probably needed a home in its own episode, which is exactly what we're going to provide it now. So for those that didn't listen to that episode, um, and I touched on it at the end, um, the question came from Largemouth Brass on Reddit. And he said, I'm curious how closely game week points translate to wins and losses and points in head-to-head -head draft leagues. I believe in the last five years I've played head-to-head, -head, there were two seasons where one team was massively better than the rest and both won the league and had the most game week points. In other years, the highest points team did not win the league. I know you're probably in a lot of leagues, so you might have some insight into this. Um, and so I, again, as I touched on at the end of the last episode, um, fed that question back to uh, Draft FC Taz, who's our main website and data man, to see what he could provide us. Um, and that's exactly, um, that, that data that he did provide me is exactly what's going to help with uh, this episode. Now, if you're new to the podcast, make sure you like, subscribe and share it with others, particularly um, this video. I know you're going to want to share in your league WhatsApp groups or discords or however, however else you communicate. Um, because no doubt some of you watching this, probably many of you that clicked on this, um, may be feeling hard done by in your draft leagues, particularly in your head-to-head -head leagues. So, you know, do you currently have the most points but aren't winning the league? Are you feeling unlucky the way your matchups or fixtures have fallen? Um, do you want to see the unluckiest draft manager currently in the world right now? If the answer is yes to any of those questions, then you're definitely going to want to stick around for this one. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So how do we at Draft FC approach a question like this? Well, I've given you the answer already. It's quite simple. I send Draft FC Taz a message. Um, I leave him to fiddle around for a few hours and then he starts uh, excitedly sending me charts that he's made. Now, I think this is almost certainly not going to be the last time we touch on this topic. Um, and I expect to uh, probably do a follow up to this in a couple of months once the season is over and we'll have the whole season's worth of the data um, to smooth out any outliers in the data. Uh, and I'm hoping in the meantime it can spark some discussion from you guys in terms of theories, um, why things may go the way they go um, and things like that. So if there is anything like that, then hit me up on Twitter or comment on this if you're watching on YouTube. Um, and um, yeah, I'm keen to hear all of your ideas. So what have I got to show you? Well, Draft FC Taz chose uh, a few of the more popular sized draft leagues um, to basically see how total FPL points correlate with league position in head to head leagues. So, obviously, before setting out on a little venture like this, it's always good to start with a hypothesis. So, uh, our null hypothesis would be that there is no correlation between FPL points um, scored and head to head league position. And the alternative hypothesis would be that there is a direct correlation between those two variables. So hopefully nothing controversial in that so far. Now, for those of you listening to the podcast on audio platforms, you're definitely going to want um, to get some of these graphs uh, visible to follow along with. So what I'll do, I'll likely tweet these out and also um, possibly create a Reddit post too, which I'll link in the description below. So if you head there now, you'll be able to tap on those and at least be able to see these charts while I'm speaking through them. Even if you can't do that, I will be, I'll, I'll describe the numbers and things so you should be able to follow along too. So the first graph that uh, we're going to discuss here, the first one that you might be looking at, is the first one that Taz sent me, which is a bubble plot for 10 team leagues showing league rank on the y-axis and FPL 
points rank on the x-axis. And for those who are just listening, I'll state the obvious, there is a clear correlation between the two. Now, I'll also say at this point in the video, um, we're treating league position as a proxy for results, obviously. So wins, draws and losses um, that managers are achieving, which of course dictates where you are in the league. I hope that's that's obvious, but I'm not getting into the um, we're not, not getting into the nitty gritty of how many points you're actually scoring in these leagues yet. But that's probably something we'll visit in the summer. So on the bubble chart, clearly shows there is a positive correlation between where you are in the league table and the number of FPL points you've managed to uh, tally up so far this season. Um, now, I also haven't had a chance to run any um, fancy statistical tests on it yet, but I would suggest by looking at it that the correlation coefficient is certainly going to be positive um, and an approaching one. One being a coefficient for a perfectly straight line um, from sort of bottom left to top right in the data. And I think, yeah, you only have to glance at this to, to see that that's pretty much what the data is showing. The next series of charts label that data in a bit more um, detail and just show it a bit more clearly with some percentages to hang on to um, rather than to having you know, having to squint at random blue bubbles on the graph. So the first is for the smallest league size um, we analyse, which are 16 draft leagues. Um, and for these charts as well, the axes have been rotated. So now the best managers are in the top left-hand corner compared to the bottom left that we were just looking at on the bubble chart. Um, but it should be fairly straightforward to understand, especially if you're looking at it. So in 16 leagues, if you are the highest scoring manager in terms of total FPL points, there is a 64% chance that you're currently first in the league, currently top of the league. Um, so that's that top left-hand square in the chart where one and one both converge. Now, if the data was um, evenly distributed, um, based on our alternative hypothesis, we'd expect the values as we move down the positions to largely mirror each other from the centre point. And on the opposite end, in the bottom right-hand corner, um, if you've been the worst performing manager, there is a 67% chance that you are currently bottom of the table. And if you say, if you follow those numbers in towards the middle, you should see um, that they lar largely mirror each other. And again, as you move further out, um, they mirror each other too. So that central line in the chart is where we would expect, you know, if, you, if you're if you fourth in the FBL points, then you're fourth in the league, etc. Um, as you move further away, that's where you start to look at some of the outliers. Um, but as I said, overall, I think this is um, a fairly expected set of values and it didn't massively surprise me um, to look at that. And to say, if we move away from the centre, that's where we find leagues uh, that deviate from those expectations. So for example, reading this chart, in 1% of 16 leagues, the managers who are fifth out of six in terms of FBL points scored um, are somehow leading the way in their leagues. And in fact, you can flip that vice versa too. So um, yeah, both 1% in both of those squares. This is where I think the door really opens to, uh, to more work and more theorizing and more discussion on this topic because I think we need to understand what might be happening in those leagues. The easiest response always is just to say it's down to luck, good or bad. Um, the fixtures just happen to fall in such a way that the results went that way. It's not exactly how you'd expect to see it um, most of the time, but but that happens. Um, they, you know, and potentially they just keep consistently coming up against a manager who smashed it in that week. So even though their own FBL points tally might be good. They've just had a string of bad fixtures, which hasn't translated into wins for them. Now, I'm sure there is an element of this. And indeed, later on, I'm going to show you a draft league, which I think very much fits that description. Um, you know, because outliers will inevitably occur. But say you don't have to have spent much time in, in sort of draft league or draft FPL circles to have heard about bad luck um, or people moaning about bad luck with it when it comes to their, their matchups. My working theory is that there may be less luck involved than, than we think or, or how it might seem. And I know um, real head-to-head -head draft heads may tend to agree the format does have to be approached differently to a classic scoring league. Um, but I'll come back to some of, those, some of those ideas once we've gone through the charts. So as we look at the next one, we're into eight team leagues now, which is by far the most common league size. And on the whole, largely mirrors the, the spread of points that we saw for 
16 leagues. So um, again, if you are first in terms of FPL points scored in 60% of those leagues, you are finding yourself top of the table. And on the flip side, um, if you're bottom in terms of FPL points scored, then you are last in 63% of leagues. And again, if you follow the chart towards the centre, um, you'll find that it largely mirrors um, between the left and right. Again, let's move on to 10 team leagues, um, another fairly popular league size. Um, and this is really where I think we we may start to notice a change. Um, we still have uh, the symmetry, um, which I think we'll see on, on any league size that we analyse. But one of the things that is striking is that the percentages in the extremes start to get a little lower. So in other words, if you are the team with the most FBL points, um, the percentage of those teams in those leagues that are first is now just 51%, whereas we were up in the 60s before for six teams and, and eight teams. And if we skip further ahead straight away to 12-team leagues, for the first time, that number dips just below the 50% mark. Um, so for the first time, when it comes to the highest scorers in terms of FBL points, um, the majority of them are not top of their league table. So just 49% will be winning in those leagues. And if we have a look at the adjacent squares, so these are still managers who in their league are the highest scoring in terms of FBL points. We can see that 21% of them will be in second place, 12% will be in third place and so on. And it gets slightly slightly lower as you move further away from, from first position. Now, we'll have to obviously see how all these charts develop and shape up once the season finishes come the end of game week 38. But from these four charts, the trend seems to be that as league size increases, we gradually see more variation between league position and overall FBL points. So if we take it to an extreme, if we go right down to the bottom end and imagine a two-team league, um, there could be instances where player A smashes player B and player B maybe only gets narrow wins over, over player A. So the league table could still, um, could still flip the other way, but it's far more unlikely. You'd expect... I don't know, we, we could run the numbers, but I'd expect 80-90% convergence of if you're the highest FBL point scorer, you're going to be top of that little two-person league. But say for the four that we've looked at already, um, 6, 8, 10 and 12, um, that, you know, first being first percentage goes 64% down to 60%, down to 51 down to 49%. And as I said, I would expect that trend to continue as you go towards um, large large 16 team leagues I say I also think this makes sense because if we do look at that other extreme in a in a hardcore 16 team league if you generally score just above average each week so you're doing fine um, and that may even put you right up there in terms of overall FBL points scored because there's so many teams there's still the potential but seven opponents each week that you could be matched up with um, would beat you and result in a loss so there is that element to it as well. And I expect that's what factors in as the league sizes grow. Um, you're just far more likely to run into an opponent who happens to have had a good week, um, even though you've had a good one too. Now, when Taz got the data that we've just been um, looking through, I asked, it, I asked him if there were any leagues out there, um, larger leagues that is, where the person with the most FPL points somehow finds themselves in last place in the league. And for 10 team leagues, there is currently one. Um, and the team ID, it was 259312, if you want to check that out for yourselves. Um, and the league is the Deep Burn Draft League 23-24. This is definitely an active league. The team that we're going to shine the spotlight on managed 35 points last week, which is impressive. Um, with an inspired Fulham defensive combo of Leno and Robinson for a win in that matchup. So all efforts being made, you know, these aren't just teams floating around in the ether adrift. Um, the team in question is called It's Getting Messy, which is an apt name when it comes to their head-to-head -head results um, so far this season. So they are leading the way in that league in terms of FPL points scored. They've scored 1,206 and the league average tally is about 100 points less than that at 1,095. Um, I would say there are nine very engaged managers and 10th in the FPL points just has 863. 
So I think that that's possibly a bit of a dead team, or I, they could just be not very experienced draft managers. So I'll, I'll maybe I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But from the 29 game weeks played so far, it's getting messy, despite having the most FPL points, has only managed 12 wins, one draw, and 16 losses, um, which puts them at 37 points in their league standings. First place is on 52 points in the league table, having managed 17 wins, a draw, and nine losses. And interestingly, that manager is third in the FPL points tally. So they're one of those, as we're slightly moving away from the uh, convergence line on those charts that we were looking at before. Now, on Draft FC, we also have a monthly report feature, a new feature this year you may have stumbled upon if you are a signed up member. And this came about because we, as a league, always run a Manager of the Month award and it was becoming quite a manual process. So this just quite nicely produces you a report for each calendar month. So um, there'll be one already done for February. Um, it tells you where you rank that month, your head-to-head victories, who your best performing players are, just in a nice little um, you know, snippet summary to be able to share with the rest of your league. Now, if we look at It's Getting Messy, um, he has never been outside the top three in any given calendar month so far this season, and it has been the manager of the month three times. Um, now, I think it's fair to say, regardless of your individual theories as to how um, this or any head-to-head variance could be explained, um, you know, between luck and just poor team management. In this particular case, I am very much leaning towards Lady Luck not favouring it's getting messy so far this season. Now, some of you may have come across some work done by another member of the FPL draft community, Nathan, in which he has sought to work out how accurate an individual um, draft league table is by simulating the season again with various fixture combinations, 10,000 to be exact, so that you can compare your current actual league table position with an expected position, which comes from averaging out all of those simulations. Um, So I guess in statistical terms, we'd call this bootstrapping. Now, as well as one of my own leagues, I provided Nathan with the Deep Burn Draft League, um, or or It's Getting Messy's team ID, um, for a bit of fun. Now, rather than explain what findings were, I think the easiest thing is just to read out Nathan's reply to me once he'd run the numbers. So he said, like I think you might have expected, 259312 has crazy variants. The results are hard to actually see on the visualisations. Indeed, I think the case where it's getting messy is last is so rare that the fixture list hadn't occurred once in my simulation. I originally was only doing this for six-person leagues and 10,000 runs felt sufficient, but I suppose it must not cover 10-person leagues quite so extensively. This doesn't matter really in terms of general results as it covers the leagues Um, and various fixtures extensively enough, but this is the first time I've seen a result that extreme that in 10,000 runs, it wasn't replicated. I've run it again to try and find the real-life leak in the simulations, but I thought I would send you the results before. Anyway, all the best, Nathan. So as you can see there, Nathan rerun that leak's fixtures 10,000 times, and the way their leak has actually panned out so far did not occur in any one of those simulations. Um... Now, when that data that Nathan sent me is formulated in some charts, which he also sent me, um, you can again see just how much of an outlier it's getting messy is, um, because his line between where he should be and where he is completely dissects all the other teams. Um, That's an amusing chart, but I think the second one is even more interesting, um, which actually looks at the number of league points they should have. So in terms of um, points for wins, draws and losses. So you can see that actually, even when simulated 10,000 times, the majority of the teams are quite tightly packed, which I suspect is partly um, what's led to some variance occurring with the outcome here, with around 12 points separating uh, the nine most engaged managers. That team that is last, um, called So Sancho, um, is really lagging way behind the other nine teams. Um, So partly why I think it's getting it's getting messy has ended up last is that that team has somehow massively overperformed. I then thought, hmm, I wonder if when those two have played each other, 
it's getting messy has possibly lost a number of close matchups. So a lot of maybe a lot of those six pointers has gone against him, which has also compounded why he's ended up in tenth, and that other team has ended up ninth, just above him. But no, even more strangely, they've played each other three times, and it's getting messy has won all three of those. So that's you can't even factor that in. So overall. It really is a strange statistical anomaly with some bad matchups for our poor struggling manager of It's Getting Messy. Um, I ran back through some of the game weeks, which again, if you go into your, um, if you go onto um, the FPL site, when you click on game week points, if you substitute your team ID for his 259312, um, you can have a look at his team and cycle back at some of the results that he's had. Um, In game week one, he had the second highest tally, 52 points. Came up against someone else who had 52 points, so he got just a draw for that. Game week four, he was the third highest scorer, 53 points. Came across the top scorer that week with 55. Game week seven, he was fourth with 45 points. Came across the guy in third with 48 points. In game week 14, he scored 49, which was the second highest score, and he came across the guy who was first with 50 points, so he lost it by a single point. In game week 19, he was fourth and scored 35 points. Again, lost that matchup by a single point to the guy who came third with 36 points. In game week 20, he was fourth again with 42 points and lost against the guy in third with 44 points. So just a a selection there of some of the bad weeks that it's getting messy has had. But yeah, if anyone wants to take up Nathan on his offer to project your head-to-head draft league in terms of expected versus actual league positions, um, I'll pop the link in the description below to his original Reddit post and you can reach out to him on there. So that's it for this episode, the second and final bonus episode of this international break um, before I imminently start gearing up towards Game Week 30 in the coming days. Now, if you stumbled onto this video and you found yourself um, watching it all and made it this far, then I sincerely hope you play Official Draft FPL. Otherwise, this would have been a real waste of time for you, and I apologise. But if you are in the right place, um, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the rest of our content. And also give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it or it's been helpful or interesting to help promote the video to other people that may be interested too. Now, I think we've only really scratched the surface um, for this topic. There's still a lot of uh, of analysis to do. I say, I think a lot of it will be more helpful once the season is finished, but really um, we haven't gone deeper into some of the underlying reasons for uh, managers um, seemingly having bad luck with their run-ins. Now, as I said, some luck and some variance is inevitably going to creep in, but it would be nice to see if we can find any common threads between teams that have maybe overperformed or underperformed so that we know um, what we should do and maybe what we shouldn't be doing moving into the future. And I guess that would also then start to apply to individual draft assets or types of draft assets. Um, I know that there's um, lots of um, lots of theory out there already, um, which I, I'd probably say a few years ago I may have poo-pooed slightly but um, you know just basically saying it doesn't matter whether you're playing classic or head-to-head you're just looking to maximize points Um, I do not agree with that um, old thought of mine at all Um, I think there are definitely two games that that are in play here and head-to-head has to be played um, and given the respect it deserves otherwise you are going to be on the receiving end of uh, of more bad luck Also, if you've not already headed over to draftfc.co.uk, please do so. Have a look at what we offer for official FPL draft managers. And if you're not sure that there's anything there that's going to interest you, you can always sign up with our exclusive code, um, especially for draft managers like you who are consuming and listening to our content, which will give you a one month free trial. So if you sign up with the code draftfcpod, all capitalized one word, then you'll be able to try with full access for a month. Uh, which you can then cancel at any time. But yeah, I want really above all, I want this video to spark the conversation. So um, if you're watching on YouTube, um, then I'd be really interested to hear some of your comments um, below in terms of what you make of this data, um, maybe some ideas of of why you think certain managers under or overperform, you know, what sort of tactics or players you're generally interested in when you're thinking about your head-to-head leagues, 
I did a bit in a previous video about how I approach uh, an upcoming head-to-head -head matchup. Um, so again, be interested to hear some of your thoughts on that if you've not watched that already. Um, if you're not watching on YouTube, then um, hit me up on Twitter or X. Give us a follow on there at draft underscore FC. Um, or you can um, write to me on Reddit because as I said, I'll probably be listing some of these charts on there for some of the listeners to be able to see. And of course, you'll be able to comment below those as well with any thoughts that you might have. So yeah, best of luck um, as we start to go towards Game Week 30. As I said, there will be a Game Week preview coming out in the coming days. Um, so stay tuned for that. And as always, stay shook. Stay shook.